All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. The name of the video is For This Reason. Uh, we will never be able to leave the solar system. Unfortunately, guys, we have. Uh, maybe not us as humans, but we definitely have left the solar system. I'm uh, referring to Voyager 1 and 2. But let's see what this video takes us, guys. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> We dream of interstellar travel and the conquest of space, but for this reason, we will never be able to leave the solar system. It is shocking that we seem to be stuck on this planet, and that with the prospect that this world will no longer be habitable in 100,000 years. But where is the solution? Habitable, okay. Do we have a uh, Maybe, if we destroy it, yes. Um, other than that, I'm pretty sure the planet will be here. Habitable, potentially, hopefully, right? Unless some solar flare comes and just wipes us out. I guess that's what he just said, though. All right, well played. Chance of surviving in the long term and colonizing space after all? It is a horror scenario that scientists are serving up to us. In just a few hundred years, the Earth will be a hot greenhouse in which the oceans will have risen so high that large parts of the continental masses will have disappeared. Imagine an Earth on which metropolitan areas such as New York or Rio de Janeiro, Hong Kong, and many others have simply disappeared. Millions of people have fled further and further inland. Right. Diseases have wiped out masses of people. The animal world has also become more crowded, and many species have disappeared. Oceana no longer exists. Hawaii only exists in people's stories, and cities are now located on the mountains that were once considered the highest peaks on Earth. This is inevitable if we believe science. U.S. billionaire and vision. Really quickly, um, there is something called like the doomsday map. You can look it up. And like a lot of these super rich people are starting to build bunkers um, based off of that doomsday map. Not sure if this is some type of conspiracy. It shouldn't be because that's what they're doing, <laughs> right? Um, it's just us, uh, us poors, right? Uh, who have not uh, decided to build bunkers or buy any any meaningful amount of land um, in these zones. Bill Gates has actually been buying a lot of this land. And if the doomsday map is to be considered reality, for example, he would have some of the most expensive property on the planet. He would, right? Um, He's buying a lot of it in um, on, in mountainous regions, and he will have oceanfront property. If the doomsday map is correct, guys, it's absolutely wild. Google it. Seriously. Elon Musk is one of the first and shockingly only people to respond to this future scenario with real plans. Musk says we have to go into space if we want to survive. Okay. Who is right, Musk or NASA? Did you know that Elon Musk has plans to turn Mars into an Earth-like environment? The story is called terraforming and basically involves using a nuclear warhead to release the water deposits at the poles of Mars. NASA says this is not possible. But what hardly anyone knows today is that NASA had very similar plans in the late 1980s. NASA was pushed back by technical problems, financial restrictions on space exploration, and various failures such as the space shuttle disasters. The end of the story was that NASA no longer wanted to go to the moon, did not design any new spaceships, and abandoned plans to colonize Mars. It was only when Elon Musk came along that NASA woke up again. Today, the two want to conquer the moon together. Musk and NASA are working together on the Artemis project, which envisages a first manned lunar station in just a few years. Okay. NASA will devote itself to the scientific part of the project, while Musk will focus more on the technological and probably also the tourist part. All right, really quick. Um, here's the thing. I honestly, truthfully don't believe that we should be even thinking about terraforming Mars. Um, if Earth gets so bad that we have to make an attempt to terraform Mars, then we can terraform Earth, right? So what's the point? We're already here. We're all already here. So why would we make any serious attempt to do any type of terraforming on Mars? All right. And that's unless we can get everything here sorted to the point where we can make it like a viable colony. That, that would make more sense than just saying, let's go terraform Mars. The Lunar Orbit Station is also intended to serve as a stopover for Mars flights in the moon's orbit at some point. It's therefore only a matter of time before humans land on Mars and settle there. But even Mars is not a permanent alternative. Our bodies at some can't point, take that even from. the red planet will become too small or too uncomfortable for humans. 
then we would have to leave the solar system because there are hardly any more worlds within the system that offer the prospect of habitable conditions. But it's a scientific fact that we can never cross the boundaries of the solar system. We cannot leave the solar system. Let's consider the distances in our solar system for a few moments. Okay. It is 150 million kilometers from Earth to the Sun. In astronomy, this corresponds to one astronomical unit. Mm -hmm. From the you? Earth to the Moon, it is 384,400 kilometers. And to Mars, we have to travel an average of 225 million kilometers. The distances vary depending on where a planet is in its orbit around the Sun. Right. Now let's take a leap further. The distance to Jupiter is already 778 million kilometers. It is 5.9 billion to Pluto and 100 AU or 14.96 billion kilometers to the edge of the heliosphere. Now let's take a look at our technology. The fastest spacecraft ever built by humans is currently the Parker Solar Probe, which is traveling at 700,000 kilometers per hour, and Elon Musk's spaceships are traveling at 27,000 kilometers per hour. The first Mars settlers, will have to wait around six months in the spacious and comfortable starships before they reach their destination. This technology is already considered to be extremely advanced. If a starship were to travel to the end of the heliosphere, it would take well over a hundred years. A starship that is currently technologically feasible would take several thousand years to reach the next solar system. Does this mean that the dream of the interstellar human species is over? Or are we overlooking an important fact? Okay. If this is going to work, either we're going to have to figure out a way to fold space or the concept of folding space um, or um, create some type of generational ship. Uh, I think those would be the most logical things. But how do we actually fold space? I don't know. Maybe we'll know in 100 years. You get what I'm saying here? So like the distance between points are, are really far when they're spread out. Uh, in any in any long manner, like the, the distance between the length of a cable, right, or super long, right? But if we can fold space, right, that'll be amazing. If we can do that, that'll be great. Uh, if we can figure out how to do that, uh, like Omok said in Stargate SG-1, right, <laughs> um, then we can actually have the ability to, to travel gigantic distances without any issues. Uh, either that or, again, generational ships. And it is possible. Faster than light travel is possible. Who would have thought it? We will probably never leave the threshold of the solar system in a conventional spaceship. We have highlighted the reasons for this. It would take us far too long to get there by sl we'll also have to figure out the radiation slowly overcoming issues. the distance. If we want to become a spacefaring species, not being able we to need walk new again. technologies. For a long time, the warp drive was just a figment of the imagination of a few successful science fiction writers. Right. But in the 1990s, Scientists took the drive seriously and began to do the math. The first to announce that the propulsion system was purely mathematically possible was the Mexican Miguel Alcubierre. However, the mathematician was not yet able to solve the practical propulsion system. But science never sleeps, and there are now several concepts that have come closer to a solution. However, the biggest problem remains the fuel. Other physicists and engineers are certain that in a few years to decades, it will be possible to manipulate space-time using new laws of physics. These will enable us to abolish physical laws that were previously considered irrefutable or to formulate new laws. That's plausible. We may already be at the beginning of this development because, as you may have noticed, astrophysics is in a crisis of the century. The current observations of the universe by the James Webb Space Telescope are no longer compatible with current physical theories. The current changes in cosmology could also open up new avenues for physics that we have not yet seen. As a result, we may yet be able to enable spaceships and propulsion technologies that do not use the classic method of bridging distances, but instead manipulate space-time in such a way that we can simply slip through a space fold to any location in the universe. Did you, did you just say space fold? You see what I'm saying here, guys? I think the only way this can work, I mean, obviously, if we had some type of like FTL technology that had the ability to actually work, right, and function, um, then that'd be a great idea, right? But until then, we need to figure out how it's, it could be possible to fold space. And yeah, that, that'll work. Space-time travel works. thanks to extraterrestrial technologies? It sounds crazy, but it's a fact that thousands of people on the planet see flying saucers every year. Right. The story surrounding aliens and spaceships is currently becoming even more bizarre. Allegedly, there are more and more sightings of flying objects in the airspace around Earth 
that defy the laws of physics as we know them. At the top of the list of witnesses are fighter pilots, airplane pilots, and crews of ships. They spot missiles that are discus or disc-shaped, objects described as flying eggs or even triangular objects that often appear in formation flight. Usually, eight to nine different flying objects are sighted and reported. The sightings and the confusion among fighter pilots have gone so far that there has already been a hearing before the U.S. Congress. In 2023, the former UFO Special Representative of the U.S. Army went before Congress. David Grush claimed that his superiors had lied to him for years. Allegedly, the military was in possession of several crashed UFOs, but concealed this fact. This statement coincides exactly with what the U.S. UFO leaker Bob Lazar claimed back in the late 1980s. Lazar claims to have researched UFOs and a previously unknown element in a secret facility. This element enables the overriding of gravity and thus faster than light travel or the manipulation of space-time. Lazar was celebrated by UFO fans and declared crazy by the authorities. Amazingly, Lazar also reported nine known types of spaceships. The military owns the UFOs and is allegedly trying to capture the technology for itself. This work probably began after the Roswell UFO crash in the late 1940s. So far, however, the revert after the Roswell UFO crash in the late 1940s. Okay, here's the issue with that one. Like, we know that that was a weather balloon. And notice how they're showing footage from it, and he's holding a weather balloon. All right, listen, bro. Give me some better footage. Don't show me them holding the, the weather balloon from Roswell. So far, however, the reverse engineering of the technologies has failed due to the production of the mysterious element 115, which is required for propulsion. In 2003, scientists succeeded for the first time in artificially synthesizing element 115 in the laboratory. However, it was not stable enough to operate a reactor with. Bob Lazar's reports were confirmed to the extent that this element really does exist. In a stable form, which may exist elsewhere in the universe, the element could make the described drives possible. These stories show a fascinating development. In the late 1980s, scientists portrayed Lazar as a liar and Element 115 as a figment of the imagination. What is that? Almost 20 years later, the element has been discovered, albeit not yet in the stable form that extraterrestrials apparently use. If extraterrestrials really do exist, then so do their technologies. It's probably only a matter of time before we are able to invent exactly what these beings have invented. If you are now thinking that this is all nonsense and not compatible with accepted science, you should be familiar with the vision of Russian astronomer Nikolai Kardashev. Kardashev was one of the most renowned astroscientists of his country and his time. He created a scale according to which civilizations develop linearly in relation to their ability to generate and use energy. Right. Factors such as quality of life, intelligence, and social level also increase with the ability to generate energy. He saw three types of intelligent species. Type 1 is still at the very beginning of development. Right. Typical energy sources are unsustainable and harmful to the planet, such as our coal and nuclear power plants. Type 2 has mastered this problem and developed into a species that lives in harmony with its planet. Type 3 is finally so advanced that they can extract energy directly from stars. All right, it's basically, let me explain a Type 3 society. Uh, but let me go back for a moment. Uh, so this element uh, uh, 115 is called Moscovium. Uh, apparently it is uh, accepted. It was synthesized for the first time in 2003. I've never heard of this in my life. And I love the concept of physics and science and these type of things. So I kind of feel ignorant. But um, a Type 3 society uh, would basically... Let's say, let's say we have our son, just how we have our son, they would have their son. Uh, what they would do basically is funnel all that energy. They would cover the entirety of the sun with like mirrors and solar panels and be able to target specifically uh, like, a, like one stream of energy to something on their planet that has the ability to, co to basically collect all of the energy constantly. So like how we have an issue uh, with solar panels here, um, where at nighttime we don't really get much power, that would not be their scenario because they would cover their entire sun, theoretically, obviously. Uh, they'll cover their entire sun with mirrors and then just basically stream a beam to their planet. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> and have perfectly clean energy, much higher than we could ever do, period. And once that sun goes, they move on to the next one. 
In extensions of this scale, Type we find species that will be able to control and manipulate matter. They have decoded the laws of the universe and have themselves become co-creators of the universe. They can create every conceivable source of energy and other species like us and move freely between the dimensions of the multiverse. These very high beings will no longer have a body like we do, but will have spiritualized themselves as far as possible. We are currently at the beginning of stage one on the scale, and if we are lucky, we will slowly move to stage two, but we will still have to master issues such as sustainability and world peace. Mm -hmm. So, faster than light travel, aliens, the multiverse, and interdimensional travel are not as unlikely as they currently seem. It all depends on your perspective. If we one day undertake space-time travel, we will still not fly beyond the boundaries of our solar system in the classic sense, but we'll use the exceptional physical conditions of other dimensions for space travel. Click on subscribe now because there will soon be even more impressive videos. Yeah, like that'll be the only way to do it, bro. I'm telling you, just like how he kind of said at the end here, the only way to do it is to figure out how to fold space. And um, if we start talking about folding space, we're obviously dabbling into the multiverse theory where we would have to literally slip into some type of slipstream, <laughs> right? That goes through uh, some type of multiverse that brings us directly to the other side. We go in, we go out. Uh, that that would basically be the only option, I would think, uh, because again, the human body is not really meant for the radiation that is in space. Um, there's not enough shielding that, that we can create that could, that could stop the madness <laughs> that would happen to our bodies. Uh, also keep in mind, generational ships would be a great idea if we could figure out a way to uh, maintain like Earth gravity for the entirety of that trip, um, just so people can walk, run, lift things, right? Uh, because if not, by the time, the thousand years it'll take to get to uh, another solar system, for example, um, <laughs> at our current rate of technology, obviously, um, by the time you get there, you'll basically be jello, no muscles, none. And you'll probably be taller, your body will be stretched out, right? Everyone, every single person will be basically giants compared to people on Earth um, and have no muscle. But all right. um, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day. Thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.